th that's two trillion dollars of market cap that doesn't give a flying what's happening in startup land. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have Chamath giving us his predictions for the current market. He'll give us his investment thesis and we'll see if that's going to affect the stock, crypto and capital markets. Over the past few months, Chamath has been pretty accurate, which has led to him having pretty massive success. Now most of the time he is going against the masses and their market predictions, but has come out on top in almost all these investing scenarios and his portfolio has generated a pretty substantial amount of wealth since. In this interview, Chamath tells us why he believes we haven't seen the worst of it and with the increase in interest rates, we'll see a recessionary correction happen in stock and capital markets up until the end of the year. Make sure to stay till the end of the video to hear what Chamath's prediction and investment thesis is for the next few months. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. I just think these people are really naive, like, you know, and yeah. it's not their fault, but you know, they're given way too much rope to hang themselves with. And they're, and, and the, 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 the unfortunate byproduct is going to be the, uh, the companies who gets bad advice or the bad businesses that get funded. Um, and that's not what, you know, an efficient capital market should do. These guys are the smartest of the smart. They're not dumb. Yeah. And so, you know, the price of capital is going up in that case. And so, you know, they're going to strike really good opportunities for their investors. They were asleep at the wheel and now all of a sudden they're in the soup and they got to they really were, perform. Were, no, that's not fair. I, I don't think they were asleep at the wheel at all. I just think that they, you know, Bill I'm Gurley says this, when the, when the music is on, you got to dance. Right. They did it. They raised money at the highest valuation possible. God bless them. Chamath says that if you try to outsmart the market, chances are you won't win. He's personally tried this several times without much success. Remember, the average buyer makes the simple decision to invest in the category winner. There are reasons why a certain company is the best in its industry, and there are reasons everyone is investing in this company, he says. Now you're going to see who uh, is really good at what they do um, and who is benefiting from a lot of just natural, uh, you know, you know, right. But people were only, right, when, I say, when I say they were on the autopilot, let they're me just They're going to have sharpened the pencils for the first time. They're exactly, gonna have to make that's real, what I'm talking about. They're yes. going to have to make real trade-offs. Better analogy. And this time, turns out, is not really that much different. I think, Jason, if you take your list of these high-priced startups, yep. I think it would be a, a good, useful exercise for somebody to do. Somebody in the press should probably do it. But if you take that list and just rank companies based on valuation, the last announced date, and then if they are not announcing layoffs of any kind, um, you can probably forecast when they're going to burn through the money, especially if they're hiring. And the reason that you can probably forecast that accurately is you can pretty much predict what OPEX will be, especially knowing the fact that their input costs are actually going up. So for example, most of these businesses that rely on Facebook and Google and Instagram for customer acquisition, those input costs are going up. And the reason you know that is th that's $2 trillion of market cap that doesn't give a flying what's happening in startup land. It's easier to buy the winners of a particular industry and let them grow over time instead of trying to find a company that will be able to outperform the current top company. Chamas says you can spend weeks scouring over every financial statement and drawing up theories on why you believe a company will outperform the top company in the industry. Wouldn't it be simpler and less stressful and probably more financially rewarding to just pick the top company. I think it's very difficult because I think the number of qualified investors have gone way down as the surface area of investing has gone way up. So again, just going back to this conversation, this woman is staffing most of these venture firms with their junior and mid-level partners. And again, the qualification to become a venture capitalist at this point is not that you have a, an ability to pick or you know, in David's case, have operated and actually run a business and then actually have developed a, a methodical framework or Bar Brad's business, which is Brad had to start from literally zero in the public markets and work his way backwards to end up with 15 or 20 billion of assets. It's, it's none of that. It's, are you a VP at an XYZ unicorn that may also be poorly run? And all of a sudden that, you know, gives you the qualification to go into a job where, and it's not their fault, where what they are told is, uh, what you want is what we're going to give you, which is the ability to write, you know, X number of checks per year. That is insanity. That's not what makes a good investor. And then your ability to then give advice, I don't know, it's probably zero or less than zero. 
What do you think about Chamath's financial perspective for the current market? Comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Library of Wealth. We'll see you in the next video.